Rule joints like these have been used on drop leaf tables for centuries, but until I built this little compact drop leaf table for the June 2019 issue of Woodworker's Journal, I had never used rule joints on a project, so this was a great chance. Traditionally, rule joints or drop leaf joints were cut with profiling hand planes, and you can still do it that way. But these days, you can also use a matched set of router bits, like this set here from Rockler, to do the same job with a router or router table. I routed the rule joints on my little table, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. Now, if we take a closer look, you can see that a rule joint is made up of two profiles. On the center panel of the tabletop, there's this roundover profile with a little flat fillet area on top, and we're going to route that with a roundover bit. And then on the drop leaf side of the tabletop, there's this matching cove profile with a flat area on top, and we're going to route that with a cove bit. The two profiles nest together to make a rule joint. On a well-made rule joint, the two overlapping profiles rotate past one another without binding. And in the drop leaf's down position, they continue to overlap in order to hide the drop leaf hinges underneath. Now we're going to start the routing process on the tabletop center panel with this roundover fillet profile. Now it took some trial and error to get the bit height setting correct, but if you're using 3 quarter inch stock and Rockler's router bits like I did, I can shorten your learning curve. Install the roundover bit in your router table and adjust the fence so it's flush with the rim of the bit's bearing. Then mount a couple of feather boards on either side of the bit opening to hold the panel down securely. You don't want the height or the shape of this roundover profile to fluctuate along the length of the joint or the rule joint could bind. So it's important that the panel is held down firmly against the router table and against the fence during the routing process. Now what we're aiming for here is for this flat fillet area to be 3 16 of an inch deep. But we can't route away all of this square corner in one pass. It's going to take several passes to remove all of this material. For this first routing step, we're going to be orienting the best face of the panel down against the router table. So this top face is actually going to be the bottom face of your tabletop. So be sure about which face you're routing into. Set the bit height low and make the first routing pass. Then raise the bit and make several more passes until the fillet is 3 16 of an inch deep. We're done routing the center panel, so now we can move on to the drop leaves. Switch out the roundover bit with the cove bit, and again, make sure the router table fence's facings are flush with the rim on the bit's bearing. Routing the rule joint coves in the drop leaves is easy, but there's one thing you want to be careful about, which of their faces points up. This time, we're going to route the drop leaves with their best faces pointing up, not down. So, I think it's a good idea to mark those faces just to play it safe. And just like the roundover profiles, set the cove bit low for the first pass, then raise it over a couple more passes to remove more material. So the goal here is to keep routing the cove profiles into the drop leaves until the rule joints nest together with the center panel. So let's see how we're doing with these joints. Well, we're close but the tops of these two panels still aren't flush, so there's more material to remove from the cove. I think raising the bit slightly and one more pass at the router table will do it. Yep, that did the trick. The faces of the panels are flush. Now there may be a little bit more routing that needs to happen to these joints once the hinges are in place, but for now, these rule joints are good to go. So the next step is installing Rockler's drop leaf hinges but I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine, and thanks for watching.